I've heard this idea floated around quite a few times. I've seen it in my Discord, in other Warhammer Discords, in other Discords not even about Warhammer, but it still came up. The Skaven and the Imperium of Man are kinda similar, aren't they? And not just on a superficial level, I mean genuinely there are significant parallels between the two factions, whether or not it was intentional. This is very funny to me, mostly because I don't think many of them are intentional. GW likes to keep an air of dignity around the Imperium, deservedly or not. So the idea that they intentionally made it so that their closest parallel from fantasy is the rabid race of crack-addicted ratmen would probably make their marketing team vomit in fear, followed immediately by 50 books giving every Space Marine chapter a child-friendly, lore-unfriendly makeover. But to the point, the Empire of Man isn't the fantasy equivalent to the Imperium. Nope, it's those gosh darn first 30 seconds of the video can't swear ratmen that don't actually exist. And while I said plenty of people have said this idea before, I couldn't actually find a video made about the topic. So between me wanting to make finding all the reasons why they're the same that much easier for everyone, and because I wanted to talk about the Skaven again but haven't gotten around to reading Thankul's series yet, allow me to present to you my case. First off, the simple baby stuff. The High Lords of the Imperium. The exact number of them can be kind of fluid, but as a general rule of thumb, there's 12 High Lords. I'm not going into the details of most of them, I don't care about that. If you really want to have positions like the Secretary of State but in the future listed out and explained for you, go read the wiki. But hey, did you know the Captain General of the Custodes is technically a High Lord? I bet you didn't, assuming you'd never watched TTS, in which case you definitely did. The position's not quite as official as the other ones. It's just that he gets a free spot at the table on account of both technically being second in command only to the Emperor, as well as the fact that nothing short of a greater demon or harlequin can threaten the Custodes, so everyone's just kind of afraid to deny it to the guy. But the reason I bring this up is because the Skaven Council of 13 just so happens to also have 12 members. And before you see the obvious problem with that statement and go that's 13, the 13th seat is pretty much just symbolic for the Great Horned Rat. There's only 12 living Skaven on the council. If you try and sit on that thing, you probably get to experience one of the more interesting hamster deaths, courtesy of the Great Horned Rat himself. And while this is sort of a middling point, I mean wow, numbers can be the same, who knew, it's worth noting that Skaven politics and Imperial politics are not that far removed from each other. The Skaven may take backstabbing a bit more literally than the Imperium, but on top of the hodgepodge of historical cultures GW ripped off to create the Imperium, there's a heaping helping of ancient Rome, and boy were those bastards corrupt. And that very much reflects in the Imperium of Man itself. I'm sure the only reason the Custodes never held the position of Emperor up for sale is because they are genetically modified to be completely loyal to the guy. Planetary governors are almost as inbred as the Habsburgs and constantly vie for power amongst each other. One planetary governor may want to be in charge of the system as a whole rather than just a single planet, his brother is currently trying to kill him to take the throne, his daughter is planning to kill them both so she can take the throne, and it just gets worse from there. If there's any actually competent and somewhat morally okay people in a given family, they're probably serving in the guard as an officer to get away from that mess. And of course the High Lords aren't any better. Why couldn't here on Blackheart either deal with the Maelstrom once and for all, or at the very least get his request for more garrisons granted? Why? Because that would cost money. Money that the High Lords could be spending on blackjack and hookers. Imperial politics, to put it lightly, are a shit show. And this isn't even mentioning the travesty of planetary governance that is Hermann von Strab, the ex-planetary governor of Armageddon. Some highlights of this guy include getting an entire Titan Legion killed in a completely pointless fight against the Orcs, trying to virus bomb the planet while he was still on it, and then turning traitor and working with the Orcs after he was ousted for power. I'm sure you could have figured this out on your own, but yes, he did kill his older brothers to become the planetary governor. Him being the absolute worst actually helped his case because his siblings assumed he was so stupid he wouldn't be able to pull anything off. Joke's on them, cause he got the last laugh. And of course, the Skaven are even worse. Every single Skaven is a backstabbing bastard. I'm not exaggerating for comedic effect, every single one of them is. There is no plot too evil, no scheme too dastardly, for the Skaven not to use. Poison the governor rat's food? Why stop there? Poison the food of the entire clan's home. Surely one of those meals will end up in the chief rat's gut. The leader's alone and could be easily assassinated with a blade in the dark. Far too lacking in collateral damage for the Skaven's taste. Best to blow up his entire base of operations with warpstone bombs. If you don't get caught in the blast, congratulations. You and every other rat planning the exact same thing now have a shot at being the leader. The scale and how far they're willing to take things may be different, but the principles are the same. The officials in charge are corrupt and planning to kill each other, all the while ruling over the helpless masses. It's just that in the Skaven's case, every single one of said masses is also a massive asshole. Well, I'm sure there's at least a couple of average Joes in the Imperium who could qualify as decent folk. But moving on from that, let's compare their technology and how no one in either faction really understands how it works. 
You all know how it goes for the Imperium. Forget the promises of progress and understanding, for in the grimdark future of the 41st millennium there is only yada yada yada, you get it. The Imperium has been around for so long with records so shoddily kept that they can't even remember how to make stuff from when they were first starting out, which itself is a massive downgrade from the Dark Age of Technology. A tech priest at best might understand how to keep a starship maintained, but how it works or how to make a new one? Well, let's just hope it never comes to that, because there's no way in hell they're gonna be able to figure out how to do either of those things. The entire Empire is playing a massive game of Factorio where no one kept track of their own production lines, let alone anyone else's. And I can assure you that that's exactly how this sort of thing goes. You look away from the computer for five minutes, your friend who knows how to code suddenly recreated the entire Industrial Revolution in the time it took you to go to the bathroom and make a drink, and then bugs attack, forcing the both of you to look through the wreckage of a factory no one was keeping records on. That's Imperial Tech in a nutshell. It also sometimes blows up in your face because you rolled a 1 on your plasma gun and the bearer didn't have any sunscreen because that in itself is also lost technology. The Skaven, meanwhile, have a similar problem. The average rat doesn't know how the rattling guns work, just that they do, kinda. The average warp lightning cannon crew can probably make emergency field repairs, but the specifics of how it works is known only to the particular scryer rat that put it together. Maybe it'll blow up in your face? Maybe it'll turn an entire lance's worth of Bretonians into atomic slurry. Who knows? The only way to find out is to turn it on. Of course, they're sort of coming at this particular problem in reverse. Whereas mankind forgot all of its knowledge in 40k, the Skaven never knew what they were doing to begin with. Why does one warp fire team explode while the other cook the entire enemy army before it could close the distance? Because they didn't have enough warp stone, of course. Or because they had too much. Or they mixed it improperly. Or because it was sabotaged by devious enemies from within the clan. Skaven technological progress involves taking every rat who knows how to cross wires and throwing them at a problem until one of them bullshits their way into sort of, kind of, solving it. Failing that involves stealing things from other races and copying them as best they can without actually doing any reverse engineering into how it performs its function. The story that exemplifies this best is the story of Thanquil using a far squeaker. Good old Thanquil had to do some long distance communication one day, so he used a clan scryer far squeaker to give someone a call. It's basically Skaven FaceTime. Naturally, it barely got the call through and at the end blew up in his face. And Skaven technology is so unreliable and poorly understood and maintained that Thanquil, the Skaven so paranoid he makes other Skaven look downright naive and trusting, just shrugged his shoulders and goes, oh, this is just what our stuff does. It's also worth noting that unless I'm misremembering, this is one of the only times where someone was actually trying to have him killed and he didn't just bring it on himself. The one time someone actually wanted him dead and he assumed it was a coincidence. No one knows what they're doing in the Skaven Under Empire, there's just enough of them that it doesn't matter. Speaking of there being enough that it doesn't matter, the Imperial Guard! I can't remember if I read this online or heard it in a video, or hell, maybe it was one of you fine folks in my comment section, but there's a cool quote I'm gonna paraphrase for you about the Guard. If every single Space Marine suddenly vanished, the Imperium would fall in a year. If every single member of the Mechanic has vanished, it'd fall in a month. If every single member of the Guard vanished, it'd fall in a day. The Space Marines may get all the glory and credit, but there's just plain and simple not enough of them to do everything that needs doing to keep the Imperium alive. And this means that when push comes to shove, the Imperium's ultimate solution is simply, we have more Guardsmen than you have guns. Oh sure, the Guard uses actual tactics, but on the flip side of that, the ultimate solution can often be boiled down to throwing men at the problem until it goes away. Purely from a logistical standpoint, it's an understandable solution, if monstrous. Take Hive Worlds, they're just a wee bit overpopulated. Draft a couple million of people from them every now and again, and go throw them at some random craft world who had the gall to exist until millions of years of a species history has gone under a tide of conscripts. If the Guard's men don't work, you send in the Guard's armor. Lehman Russes, Basilisks, and Valkyries as far as the eye can see. Meanwhile, standard Skaven tactics also boil down to throwing rats at the enemy until the problem goes away. Just go play Vermintide. Endless waves of storm vermin, clan rats, and skaven slaves are being thrown at you until you finally kick the bucket. Usually because a slayer bard in main leapt into a horde because by Grimnir he will have his good death whether or not you're coming with him. I'm Slayer Barden Mains. Fuck you, I'm having my good death. You can do this in Total War as well, but then people who suck the fun out of games will tell you that's inefficient. Recruit Doomstacks of Rattling Guns and watch his entire horde of Bretonian peasants throw themselves to their deaths, and then drop a nuke on everyone involved. Friendly fire? Who gives a shit? Not the Skaven, and not the Imperium either. The Skaven and Old Fantasy Tabletop explicitly had rules allowing them to fire into their own units engaged in melee. And in the lore, the Imperium doesn't really much care if the enemy is engaged in melee range with the Guard either. Someone called for an Earthshaker. It doesn't matter much if you happen to be in the firing line of the thing. There's some other more minor comparisons to make as well. For instance, Space Marine chapters are all one giant sausage fest. In comparison, the Skaven only have males in any position of power. 
That's because Fiamos gave an our, uh, the, a, uh, you know what? Go look up what happens to scaven females. Go on, I'll wait a minute. Did you look it up? Yeah. Yeah. There is a novel where a scaven warlord has some female bodyguards. I think it might be Thakul's novel, but as I said, I haven't read those yet. You can also make the comparison that a lot of Imperial organizations have direct Skaven clan equivalents. The Council of Thirteen is of course the Imperium's High Lords, but there's plenty more than that. For example, Clan Scryer is the Adeptus Mechanicus. Clan Pestilens, meanwhile, could be said to be a loose interpretation of the Ecclesiarchy, both being the organizations with the most fanatical devotion to their gods. Alternatively, Clan Pestilens is the Adeptus Sororidas, both being extremely militant arms of the faith. Incidentally, you are now thinking of a Skaven sister of battle. Have fun with that. Clan Eshin is the Skaven equivalent to the Officio Assassinorum, which might be the most obnoxiously named organization in the entire Imperium of Man. Try and say Officio Assassinorum three times fast. Officio Assassinorum, Officio Assassinorum, Officio Assa Fuck. Clan Mulder, meanwhile, is the Adeptus Mechanicus when a Magos Biologus goes off his meds. And of course, the Skaven and Imperium are both hugely populated, highly theocratic, xenophobic empires worshipping a god who doesn't give a damn about them. Both of them think all of reality is rightfully theirs, and will stop at nothing to achieve that goal. And before you break out the Emperor Loves Humanity crap, do remember that he loves humanity in the way someone may love their body. Do you love every single blood cell in your veins? I thought not. The Horn Rat may actively dick with his followers because it's funny, but the spirit is there for both factions. I hope I've come to enlighten you on the fact that we don't actually need Space Skaven in 40k, because the Imperium already are the Space Skaven. Oh no, I'm just kidding, we absolutely need proper Space Skaven. Don't give me that hood crap, they're not even rats anymore, they're weird necklace people that age you into dust. I'm sure there's more comparisons to be made, but for now, I believe this will suffice. That's heck writer speak for I'm running out of ideas to keep the script going, by the way, just in case you couldn't figure that one out. Thank you, as always, to my wonderful channel members. You are the warpstone to my Skaven, the Astronomicon to my Imperium. Without you, I simply cannot keep going. If you'd like to support the channel, feel free to subscribe or become a member. Either way, thank you for watching and take care out there. You know what comparison I wish there was to be made? Skaven Titans. Seriously, Games Workshop, you created a fantasy race of rats capable of making hellfire machine guns, teleportation, long-distance phone calls, and nuclear missiles, and yet a rickety mech suit is too much for them? That is shameful. Shame on you, GW, for not giving me a Skaven battle mech. Don't tell me the money isn't there for it. The amount of people who'd kitbash it into an orc mech alone would justify the cost, even though these people are clearly in the wrong because you can't improve on Skaven ingenuity. At least make like a Skaven equivalent of the Grey Knight baby carrier. Come on, GW, you approve that, a Skaven mech can't be any worse. That's something a Skaven would make.